Hey guys, it's Rob with TechAge here to bring you a quick look at NVIDIA's brand new GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. This first look is going to be a lot more abbreviated than I would like, but since I just overhauled our test suite, I have a limited amount of benchmarking information available. A full review will come later though, so for now, let's take a look at what NVIDIA is bringing to the table. At its $449 price point, the 1070 Ti is clearly purpose-built to take on the likes of AMD's Radeon RX Vega 56, so it probably won't be surprising to see it leap ahead in many tests. Fortunately for everyone who plans to buy a 1070 Ti, Nvidia chose to lean its performance more towards the 1080 than the 1070. The end result is that the 1070 Ti has 128 fewer cores than the 1080, but it shares the same clock speed and the same amount of memory. It is important to note though that the 1070 Ti has GDDR5 clocked at 8GHz, whereas the 1080 has GDDR5X clocked at 10GHz. If you think that drop should make a difference in some tests, you're probably right but I need to conduct a lot more testing in the week ahead to create a clearer picture of just how much of a difference it can make. It may be worth noting that under the hood of Nvidia's 1070 Ti Founders Edition is the same 5-phase dual FET design that was seen in the 1080 FE, and as for the cooler, it's one that's designed for 250 watt GPUs, but it's being placed on a card spec at 180 watts. That means overclocking shouldn't be a big issue. I'll have more information on that available in the full review, so stay tuned. To help give some perspective of where a card like the GTX 1070 Ti stands among the entire current crop of graphics cards, here's a handy chart. Since I haven't been able to put the GTX 1070 Ti through the usual gauntlet of tests, I can't quite confirm my suspicions on its overall performance quite yet. It could be that the 1070 Ti will match the overkill rating of the GTX 1080 in Vega 64 at 1080p, but for now, I felt safer keeping it on par with the ratings I've applied to the original GTX 1070. Before jumping into testing, here's a quick look at our test system. The side effect of this review not having real gaming benchmarks is that every GPU was tested with the latest available GPU driver. Both sets of drivers include optimizations for Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, which happens to be one of the nine games in our updated test suite, so it was rather important to make sure those drivers were integrated from the get-go. With that covered, let's jump right into the results. Nvidia's GeForce GTX 1070 Ti slots right in between the 1070 and 1080. Across the three Fire Strike resolutions, Nvidia's 1080 performed between up to 8.5% better than the 1070 Ti, which is fairly appropriate since the 1070 Ti cost 10% less. The 1070 Ti enjoyed even greater gains over the 1070, proving up to 12% faster. AMD's Vega 56 has proven to be capable in its fight against the GTX 1070, so it's no shocker that Nvidia's latest 449 card edges past the Vega 56 just a little bit. That's at least in the 1080p and 1440p tests. At 4K, Vega 56 places ahead with a 1% gain. Not that the gain on Nvidia's part are much more impressive, these cards are effectively delivering equal performance in this test. At 1440p, where I think the 1080 Ti is best suited, Nvidia's card inches past the Vega 56 ever so slightly. It could be argued that since Firestrike is a DirectX 11 test, it's not truly effective as a benchmark in today's landscape, so let's check out TimeSpy, FutureMark's DirectX 12 test. The situation does actually change a little bit here. With these tests, the GTX 1070 Ti inches a bit further over the Vega 56 than it did in the DirectX 11 test, but more interesting than that is the fact that the GTX 1070 doesn't have as much of an advantage over the GTX 1070 Ti as it did before. Here, the 1080 proves 6% faster than the 1070 Ti, but the 1070 Ti is about 13 or 14% ahead of the 1070. Not too shabby. On the API side of things, Nvidia's 1080 Ti performs just about where we'd expect it to in relation to its closest siblings. Despite AMD's typical prowess for DirectX 12 gaming, it falls a bit behind Nvidia here. I'll be testing at least three DirectX 12 games for the full review, and possibly four, so hopefully that paints a better picture of where things stand on that front. Again taking a look at the GTX 1080, 1070 Ti, and 1070, the new Ti card looks even more impressive than before. With the 1080p high test, the GTX 1080 was 8.6% faster than the 1070 Ti, but the 1070 Ti was 12% faster than the GTX 1070. At 4K, the percentages were 9.8% for both the 1080 over 1070 Ti and 1070 Ti over 1070. At 1080p extreme, which is far more grueling than the 4K test, the 1080 was a meager 2% better than the 1070 Ti, whereas the new big brother to the 1070 proves 14% better. It's not relevant to this quick look, but it's interesting to note that Superposition doesn't support multi-GPU, and in fact, using multi-GPU will actually hurt your scores over using a single GPU. It's a pity, especially as our next test supports it just fine. And speaking of... 
Catzilla helps paint a picture of how different benchmarks can give different results based on where they weigh a GPU's strengths. It still surprises me that this benchmark supports multi-GPU whereas Superposition doesn't, but perhaps that will be added later. Catzilla also proves to be a bit more punishing than the others on AMD's RX Vega GPUs, but that's not the only thing of note. Most of the previous benchmarks have put the 1070 Ti ahead of the 1070 more than the 1080 was ahead of the 1070 Ti. Here, the GTX 1080 is 12 to 13% faster than the 1070 Ti, whereas the 1070 Ti is about 9% faster than the 1070. What that ultimately means is that given the other results we've seen, it feels like the 1070 Ti is a bit starved for memory bandwidth, an obvious side effect of dropping from the 1080's 10GHz down to 8GHz. And with those performance results out of the way, it's time to wrap things up. Making assumptions about a graphics card like the 1070 Ti isn't that difficult on account of the fact that it's the 8th Pascal GeForce we've taken a look at. We knew it'd probably slot in between the 1080 and 1070, and it does indeed. Ultimately, whether you play at 1080p or 1440p, you're going to be getting a great experience with the 1070 Ti. The card would also perform well at the ultra-wide resolution of 3440 by 1440 but I wouldn't really recommend it for 4K. In fact, I'd only recommend a 1080 Ti and higher for 4K, which rules out the vast majority of the current GPU market. If you're running 4K on a card like the 1070 Ti, you're making a lot of compromises one way or another. That all said, a card like the 1070 Ti barely needs to tackle the full onslaught of tests given we know so much about it, but benchmarking is really good for finding things we don't know about. A great example of that is with Catzilla, where the performance of the 1080 and 1070 Ti in comparison to all of the other tests shows that sometimes memory is important. There's a big difference between 8GHz and 10GHz, so I'd encourage anyone picking up a 1070 Ti to open their minds to overclocking at least the memory. And speaking of overclocking, Nvidia is encouraging everyone who picks up a 1070 Ti to spend some time overclocking it, which to me says if you spend enough effort on it, you should be able to get the 1070 Ti to come scary close to the performance of the 1080. I'm going to wrap things up here, but as mentioned earlier, this is just the start of our look at the 1070 Ti. It's proving a busy season, so I am going to focus on benchmarking the GPUs in the general area of the 1070 Ti, so that I can deliver a more well-rounded look next week. If you want to look at these initial results in more detail, I'd recommend hitting up the website and looking at the article version of this quick look. Until more benchmarking can be done, game on, and please consider hitting the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of our content. Thank you for watching.